we present a reliable, safe surgical approach to chronic recalcitrant anterior knee pain. Our objectives are to describe new physiology and kinematic behavior of the knee, a common trait that is linked to this condition, and to describe an operation based on that physiology that helps most. The authors of this editorial bemoaned the absence of a dependable operation to manage patients with anterior knee pain, suggesting that the disorder is a multifactorial symptom complex that overlaps many disorders with a characteristic history and nonspecific physical exam. The kinematics were shown in volunteers. We injected the fat pad and infrapatar plica or IPP with contrast, filling the anterior compartment. Collectively, these tissues act as a deformable shock absorber. Post-IPP release, fat pad deformation and stretch is abolished, correlating with relief of anterior knee pain. With motion, the IPP and fat pad rotate around the IPP attachment point, FA, which sits below the axis of rotation of the knee, ICR. As the cycle repeats, the IPP stretches and fat pad deforms. As a unit, they show stretch and deformity, behavior that is not isometric. At 90 degrees of flexion, FA is broad, the fat pad is tubular. At 45 degrees, the IPP is rippled, showing laxity, the fat pad is triangular. In full extension, the fat pad is distorted, the IPP stretched and contrast squeezed from FA. The common trait linking anterior knee pain is the behavior of the IPP and fat pad unit, tethered at FA, filling space and absorbing shock. Sensate, the tissue complex undergoes cyclical deformation, abolished with release. Now, after IPP release, in flexion, the detethered fat pad occupies the notch, and as the knee moves, opposes the curves of the distal femur with little distortion. Pain relief may be mechanical, eliminating irritation of the nerves, or from altering severed neural pathways. In the first clinical case, before IPP release, the diagnostic arthroscopy was pristine. Viewing from the anterolateral portal, one sees a dollop of inflammation adjacent to a split IPP appearing normal. From a relaxed appearance in mid-arc, the IPP tightens as it approaches the apex of the notch, contacts it and rotates out of view, as the fat pad then contacts the trochlea. In full flexion, the IPP tightens and becomes vertical. Repeated contact is observed at the apex of the notch. Release of the IPP using a punch and resection using a shaver is completed, leaving the fat pad unconstrained, seen from lateral and medial views. In the second case, the IPP from above appears separate. In the IPP is a window or fenestra seen here. This plica tissue all is to be resected. In flexion, the IPP appears vertical and linear. As the knee extends, the IPP approaches and contacts the articular surface at the notch apex. Further extension brings the fat pad against the notch. A punch introduced through an anteromedial portal is used to release the IPP from the femur and with care from the ACL below. Compression from the IPP has induced the reactive groove above the broad fiber space of the IPP at FA. A shaver is used to remove this adherent connective tissue from the ACL. The shaver, hood reversed, is passed along the ACL, removing all trace of the IPP to the level of the intermeniscal ligament. The IPP has now been completely removed, and hemostasis is completed using an RF device. The fat pad, now detethered, has no notch attachment. This operation can be used as a safe, reliable first surgical step for recalcitrant anterior knee pain.